All right. So uh, still dealing with the associated genre equation that comes from uh, solving Laplace's equation of spherical coordinates by separation of variables in case where we do not assume um, axial symmetry. Um, and last time, the associated Lagrangian functions, which are the uh, solutions of the uh, of, um, beta part of uh, Laplace's equation, uh, were those functions were introduced. Um, and Compared to, to with the various properties that they have. Now, there are a whole bunch of recurrence relations that associate Lagrange functions satisfy, which are kind of similar to the recurrence relations that Lagrange polynomials satisfy. And I'm going to quickly show you examples. Um, right. So here, here we have a bunch of recurrence relations. Um, so, for instance, Right here we have a recurrence relation where we uh, notice the subscript is all the same, but um, but the superscript is different. So, for instance, uh, PLM plus one is determined in terms of PLM and PLM minus one. So, so you generate ones of, uh, start with ones of lower degree, and you can use this to generate ones of higher degree um, uh, pretty efficiently. Um, okay. Um, but, but now I'm going to use those recurrence relations to show you that in certain cases we can come up with relatively simple formulas for uh, associated uh, genre functions. So here's an example of that. Uh, so this is actually the general formula for the associated genre functions based on the Rodriguez formula for the uh, genre polynomials. So, if I take this and just set um, L equal to M, then things work out very nicely because I so let's suppose L is equal to M, and so then I'm taking the 2M derivative of this. But if L is equal to M, here I have a quadratic raised to the Mth power. That's a polynomial of degree 2M. So if I take a polynomial of degree 2M, and I differentiate it two m times. What kind of function is that going to give me in the end? I'm not sure. Think of a simple example: uh, quadratic function take a second derivative. Can it be a constant? Yes, it will be a constant. Uh, what's more, in this case, it's not hard to figure out what the constant will be, because this is x squared minus 1 raised to the uh, mth power. Okay, so I have it written down here for the case of L equal m. Um, that uh, the leading coefficient of this polynomial is going to be 1. Uh, so the, this leading term is x to the 2m. Well, when you take the derivative of a power of x, like the take the derivative of x to the n, n times, keep point down an exponent, you get n times n minus 1, n minus 2, and so forth, it's a factorial. <laughs> so the, this derivative works out to be just with a quantity 2m factorial. Um, so now I'm going to have all of this times 2m factorial. So that's the product of all the numbers from 1 to 2m. Now look down here, we have all the numbers from 1 to m. But then we double each one of them. So that is also the product of all the even numbers. So the entire denominator is a product of all the even numbers, 2, 4, 6, up to 2m. So if, if all the evens are down here, and all of them are up here, you cancel. You're left with the odds. Well, that's 2m minus 1 double factor. Um, and then everything else sticks around. So now we have this. So this is the formula for the associated Lagrange function with the same subscript and superscript of both m. So that's one combination that can be 
uh, work out. <clears throat> uh, one thing I want to point out is, uh, as I mentioned before, these associated genre uh, functions are only polynomials in X when N is even, because otherwise we get some kind of radical here. But keep in mind that when we use the associated genre functions to go with solution of the Laplace's equation, we don't evaluate these functions at x, we evaluate them at cosine theta. So then, if I plug in x equal cosine theta here, I have 1 minus cosine squared theta, which is 1. It is sine squared. And then we have, so then we have sine squared to the, so then this simplifies to just sine theta to the nth power. So, although it's not a polynomial in X, um, you do get uh, polynomials in terms of uh, sine or cosine. Uh, I mean, you get both sine and cosine in there. Here's another combination. Uh, here's one of the recurrence relations uh, from, that was taken from the text. Um, so it, it really relates uh, social genre functions with very subscripts. Um, now, if I go ahead and set L equal to M in here also, and then I um, and then use the fact that um, these social genre functions have to have the subscript greater than or equal to the superscript, otherwise it's zero. Because then you're taking too much of a derivative. Um, so, that would mean that um, if I set L equal M in here, this term will disappear. And that will enable me to express, oh, I forgot the of X. Um, over here. Okay. Um, so that lets me express p m plus one m in terms of p m m. Um, but the thing is, we know what this is because that was worked out up here. Um, so here I have all of the odd numbers from one to two m minus one. Well, two m plus one is the next odd number. So multiplying two m minus one double the factorial by 2m plus 1 gives me 2m plus 1 double factorial. So notice that um, these expressions are almost the same. So we have a minus here versus a plus here. So, um, so when the subscript and the superscript are the same or one apart, uh, we have relatively simple expressions for those uh, associated with functions. What? You said you could Oh, um, over here, I just had PLN plus 1. It's supposed to be of x. Actually, well, it's not really good because we have to show x that I have that. <laughs> Any questions about these particular expressions for associated algebra functions were? function even or odd. Um, we can start by what we know about the logic polynomials for which the associated logic function can be obtained. So the logic polynomials uh, are even if the degree is even, odd if the degree is odd. For instance, p0 is equal to 1, uh, which is even, uh, p1 is equal to x, which is odd. Another way of finding that but pretty concise is PL of minus X is the same as minus one PL PL of X. So now what we can do is if we use this formula for the associated algebra functions in terms of the algebra polynomials, 
um, what I can do is, I, so I start with this, and then I'll replace x with minus x um, throughout. I have to be careful about this, um, because it, we really have to make a substitution consistently everywhere. Even here, take a derivative with respect to x, well now that's a derivative with respect to minus x. The only part that's not going to change right away is this, where we have 1 minus x squared. So, what do we get? So, PL of minus x, that's replaced by this, from what we know about the parity of quadratic polynomials. Also, taking derivative with respect to minus x, that's just minus uh, derivative with respect to x, so we get a minus 1 to the m factor here. Um, and then we have um, this minus 1 to the L. Go ahead and pull that out. So now we have all this minus 1 um, uh, so I'm going to combine these and minus 1 to the L plus M. And then this minus 1 to the M I leave here because this part right here that I'm highlighting that's exactly this. The formula for dissociable dropper function. So, in the end, this is what I get. Um, so the parity depends on the sum of L and M, whether that is even or odd. <laughs> Next thing we'll look at are special values. And what I mean by special values is what do we get if we plug in so you need to find our x going between minus 1 and 1. So what do we get when x is equal to plus or minus 1? Also, what happens if uh, x equals 0? So, if we look, go back to this formula here, and we plug in x equal to plus or minus 1, well, that's going to make this 0. Unless m is 0, in which case, we're just going to um, have 1 here. Um, but if n is equal to 0, then that's 1. That's 1. We're not taking a derivative. Um, so we just get a little drop polynomial of uh, degree L. So when n is, so when n is positive, um, the social algebraic functions are equal to 0 at the endpoints. Um, so that's what we have here. When m is equal to zero, um, the remember logic polynomials are normalized so that if x equals one or equal to one, and then at x equal minus one, it's minus one to the l. As for x equals 0, if we go back to the um, formula for parity, suppose I plug in x equals 0 right, here and here, then, um, then these values, the associated value function, will be the same. Um, but if L plus M is odd, then this is going to be minus 1. So the only way that this equation can hold with these values being the same, both at x equals 0, is if a function value is 0. 
Um, and that this goes with what's known about an odd function. In general, an odd function has to be equal to zero at x equals zero. That's because when you negate x, you negate the y value. So we have this um, that are equal to zero when l plus seven is odd. Um, when uh, L plus M is even, um, I won't work through the details here, but um, in this frequency ratio of double factorials. Now, what about our polynomial? Uh, for instance, we know that the Lagrangian polynomials are orthogonal with, on the uh, with scalar, this scalar product, actually, for uh, integrating from minus one to one. And there's no weight function, or in other words, weight function is equal to one. So that covers the case of uh, m equals zero. But um, what about? Um, They are associated with Jodhra functions. So what we do to figure it out is uh, here I've used the uh, Rodriguez formula for the associated with Jodhra functions. Um, okay. Now, I'm using a shorthand. So capital R, that's going to be x squared minus 1. Um, so if I go back to the formula for the associated Lagrangian functions. So this would be equal to r to the m over 2 power. Um, but I can have two of these. So I'm going to have r to the m over 2 times r to the m over 2. So it's going to be r to the m. Um, and actually, oh, that's not right. Uh, I'm actually going to use this formula for associated Jodhra functions. That way it's in terms of, like, of so, so we're going to have r to the l here. So if I use this formula, where l is equal to p or q, and multiply them and integrate from minus 1 to 1, then just making that substitution, and this shorthand, then this is what I get. That's not good. <laughs> now, what we're hoping for is that this will, this will not be zero if p is not equal to q. Uh, in other words, so we have this uh, orthogonality relation. So, we're going to look at two different cases. Cases where the indices are not equal and then when they're equal. So first from a not equal case, so without loss of generality, we will assume that P is strictly less than Q. So to figure out what this integral is, we're going to use integration by parts, and we're going to carry it out P plus M plus 1 times. Um, so the idea here is, since P is less than Q, the number of times you're differentiating over here, the right one, is at least P plus M plus 1 times. And it, it may be more than that, but it's at least that much. So, this right here, this derivative, that's playing the role of the DV in the integration by parts formula. So then what I'm going to do is when I apply carry out integration by parts, I'm going to take differentiations from here 
and carry out differentiation, repeated differentiation of the rest of the integral. But then every time I carry an integration by parts, I'm also going to have a boundary terms. So if I'm from the UV part of the integration by parts formula. Um, but what we would find, not just from this R to the M sitting here, but from taking derivatives of this, every single boundary term we get as part of this process is going to include at least one factor of r. And r is equal to x squared minus 1. So if we plug in the, the limits, plus or minus 1, this is 0 on the boundary. So all the boundary terms are. Now, What's left is, if I remove p plus m plus 1 differentiations here, and I shuffle them over to here, then I have, I'm taking a derivative of, uh, um, okay, be very careful about this. Um, I think some of these numbers I have here. So r to the p is of degree um, 2p. But then I take the derivative p plus m times. Um, so that's going to have um, degree p minus m. But then this is of degree 2m, because it's a quadratic raised to the nth power. So this right here, that I've highlighted, has degree p plus m. Okay, so that's correct. But whatever this is, I'm going to um, take a derivative of it p plus m plus 1 times. That's higher than the degree, so the result is 0. So sure enough, when p is less than q, in other words, when the indices in subscript, the subscripts of your associated dominant functions are not equal, this integral turns out to be zero. So we do have orthogonality. Any questions about? So, so it's interesting that the uh, solid daughter functions have exactly the same orthogonality relation as we'll drop the polynomials do. That's meaning how that worked out. But the thing is, if you're going to expand a, f a function as a, like a, uh, like take some function that's a fact, you want to write it as a, a, a series expansion involving associated little daughter functions, right, it certainly helps that they're orthogonal. In terms of getting a coefficients, but you also need to know what is the value of the scalar product of one of these functions with itself. So in the case of p equals q. So what happens in that case is we're, so we have this integral with uh, p equal q, and now we perform an integration by parts p plus m times. So 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 what happens in that case? Um, because, as I mentioned before, this right here, r to the m, and then this, this first differentiation expression, that's polynomial degree p plus m. So if I apply integration by parts, p plus m times, and I move all the differentiation operators over to here, um, that's going to end up giving me a constant. 
Um, so to show you what that looks like, um, so I have this, and by product rule, um, that I have this expansion involving these binomial coefficients, and then derivatives of R to the M and derivatives of this individually. So this is this binomial theorem right here. That's how you, you obtain the product rule for higher order derivatives such as this. So it's just applying the product rule repeatedly. Now, um, okay. Now, S is going from zero up to P plus F. And keep in mind, um, P has to be greater than or equal to M, or the entire social daughter function is zero. Now, depending on the value of s, one of these derivatives or the other may be zero. Now, when is this equal to zero? Well, it's when s is strictly greater than m. Now, for this, we look to when, when this is uh, equal to zero. That's when this degree of difference. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I totally goofed. Okay, I'm going to write this down. So if I have e s m s as equal to zero, whenever s is greater than two f, if ever r is in the collective, <laughs> that's what I'm telling you. Remember when I actually I'm going to forgot r is a quadratic, so r to the n is of degree two m. So when s is greater than two m, this root. Um, while the other derivative expression B plus two m of s R B that is equal to zero when we have the following two p plus 2m minus s is greater than 2p. Um, but I'll cancel terms here. Okay, I don't need to display equations for that. So, So when s is greater than or less than 2m, this whole term is zero. The only time, it, so the only possibility left is when s is equal to 2m. So now we have this. <laughs> now, this right here, remember r is a degree 2m. Take a derivative of this, it's a constant. So we're going to get a 2m factorial from that. Um, same thing over here. This is r to the p. This is a degree 2p. You take a derivative of that, we get 2p factorial. Um, and then over here, we have this is the formula for the uh, binomial coefficient. So then we simplify, and this is what we get. about what happened here before I continue. Uh, 
Now, if we go back to the original integral, then subset p is equal to q. Um, so, when I'm taking using integration by parts, um, I'm taking all of the uh, differentiations from this one, for instance, and moving them over to this. And that derivative is what has just been worked out. So you end up with a constant factor. So that gets pulled out, showing up right here. What's left from the integration by parts is just r to the p by itself. Um, okay. And uh, that integral is worked out to be this. <coughs> now, um, I think it's particularly good way to show that. I might look into that in a moment. But first, uh, so for now, we're just going to take this for granted. <laughs> it's kind of ugly. Um, and the thing is, we have 2p double factorial. So we, can, we have a whole bunch of powers of 2 that we can pull out. Um, then we have the um, uh, p factorial here and here. Um, okay. Oh, also here we have uh, double factorial. But I can write that as a single factorial as long as I put p factorial here. Um, and that leads to nearly half of these factors of two that we have here. So from 2p double factorial, um, I think what I should do is make an intermediate step. So 2p double factorial is the same as two to the p, p factorial, But then 2 times 2 to the p, that's uh, 2 to the p plus 1. Um, but here we have, we have 2 p plus 1 double factorial here. Um, but I can write that as... Um, Here's the product of all the odds. I can write that as the product of all of them, as long as I put the product of all the evens up above. And that's what leads to an additional 2 to the p. So from here to here, we get 2 to the 2 p plus 1, and another p factorial. So that's where all that comes from. And the reason why uh, that's done is here we have 2 p plus 1 factorial. Here we have 2 p factorial, right here. We have a Canceling, leaving us with just 2p plus 1 uh, down below. And then it looks like pretty much everything else cancels. <laughs> so we're left with this. Now, this is uh, important because this factor, 2 over 2p plus 1, that is what you get from taking just a plain Lagrangian polynomial of degree p and integrating it squared. You get this. Though with the associate Lagrangian function, you get the same factor but times this. This uh, ratio of factorials. Again, a very close connection to what we see between see from Lagrange polynomials and associated Lagrange functions. <clears throat> so this is all the information we need if we want to, to expand a function in terms of associated Lagrange functions that have the same uh, superscript. Um, now, um, the associated Lagrangian polynomials, as opposed to the associated Lagrangian functions in the other, those are also orthogonal um, on the interval minus 1 to 1, but they need this weight function, 1 minus x squared pm, um, which actually makes sense because uh, the Associated with genre functions are equal to 1 minus x squared to the m over 2 
times the scaling factor times one of these associated with polynomials. So when you multiply two associated with genre functions, what we have inside this product are two associated with genre polynomials. And you have a 1 minus x squared to the m over 2 from here, and 1 minus x squared to the m over 2 from here. Multiply those together, and you get 1 minus x squared to the m. So that factor is pulled out of this product and becomes a wave function. So, so this result here is really just another way of interpreting this integral being equal to zero. Any questions about this or on homework problems? Can you explain the double factorial considering, like when you split it up? Oh, you mean like, uh, oh, like going from here to here? Yes. Okay. So here we have this is 2 times 4 times 6 times 8 all the way up to 2p. Now all those are even. Each one has a factor of two that I can pull out. And because there are two going from up to 2p, there are p even numbers in total that are being multiplied. If each one of them has a factor of two, that's a two to the p that I can pull out. Uh, but if I have two times four times six times eight and I pull out all these twos, what's left? Half of those, one times two times three times four, up to, and there are p of them. So that's p factorial. Um, so example, uh, I have eight double factorial. Two, four, six, eight. So then I have two, 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 pull out. One, two, three, four. So eight double factorial is the same as two to the fourth times four factorial. So it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a rearranging of all the Somehow are getting close to the end of the homework. So this took how much we need to do when numbers are dropped. Okay. What I'm going to attempt to do, and I have enough time to try, and this is totally unprepared, so it may go completely wrong, and that's what, and I'll try to be okay with it if that happens. Then just work that later. Um, this integral right here, minus number one, r to the p dx. Can I do it? <laughs> you know, I'm hobbled by trying to do this in the middle of class. Um, so, integral from minus one to one. One to one, a oh, one, um, <laughs> r to the p dx. All right, so plug in what r is. Um, that's x squared minus one. Um, now, seems a bit too much to. Uh, But like the whole idea of expanding this out and trying to do power that way. I'm thinking maybe it's a um, like a trig substitution instead. Now we have x squared minus one. Actually, oh, why do one minus x squared instead? It might work out a little nicer. So if I let x equal to sine theta. Um, 
And what should I do cosine? Because, yeah, I'm gonna have to do cosine would be better. So, so one minus cosine squared would be sine squared. So now I have sine to p theta p theta, but if x is equal to cosine, then dx is equal to minus sine theta. So let I get sine of 2p plus 1. And then for the uh, limits, be from pi to 0, but I flip it, so it's from 0 to pi. And what I remember about this is um, that this can be done using integration by parts. Um, okay. But there's like a recurrence for it. Um, let's see how that goes. So if I let um, uv equal to sine of the 2p, and then dv equal to sine theta d theta, then I would have 2p cosine um, for the boundary terms, except I'd be plugging 0 and pi. And those would be zero. So the boundary terms like to go away. So I'm going to get minus the integral of b du. So, oh, that might not work out so well. But um, well, no, never mind. Okay. So yeah, V is equal to minus cosine. My U is equal to sine to the 2P. So I get 2P sine to the 2P minus 1. Okay, so now I have that. Um, Okay, then I want to apply integration by parts again, and certainly the dv would be cosine. Um, therefore, v would be sine. Boundary terms will still go away. So I'm going to get 2p. Um, so then if uh, dv is cosine, then, okay, so v is sine. So if v du, um, so then 2p. One sine of the two p minus two <laughs> hmm. okay. Seems to a lot of trouble to go to that just reduces power by one. <laughs> so, um, I guess you have a sine and a cosine, I keep flipping back and forth, but at least power has been, um, unless I messed something up here. But Something seems wrong here. Oh, that's right. Two p minus two. Oh, yeah, so it should be two p minus one. Okay. There you go. All right. So we see the, the, the pattern here. Until eventually, I think these are all odd. Um, so if I keep going. I get a two p factorial. And I 
get um, the sine theta. Um, but the integral of uh, sine theta from zero to pi, that's uh, two. Now I'm a little suspicious of this because I feel like I'm putting the three of what I saw earlier. Um, but if I check, um, okay, so all this was here before. Oh, I've got to look for minus. Okay, so here I have, that's right. Yeah, this should be a minus, a fine integration by parts, a total of 2p times. But it only negates every other time, so it should be minus one to the p. Okay. I've got that part right, <laughs> at least. Um, okay, the factor of two, that's supposed to be there. Um, but I'm definitely not getting this ratio of double factorials right at all. Um, this has. The, all the even numbers from 1 to 2p, this has all the odd numbers in the denominator. Okay. So, certainly something went wrong. Um, And it's supposed to have the evens up top and odds down below. Let's say so. Um. <laughs> Unless I something I'm doing wrong, feel free to check me. <laughs> I won't get mad. Um, I'm already mad. <laughs> okay. Um, Seeing how there would be a cost to divide pi. The only way you can see that happening. Well, okay. So there's a way to evaluate this. Well, okay. This could be treated as like a u substitution. Um, okay. So if I repeat it this step, if I let u be equal to a sine uh, Then I use the two p minus one, and then this is du. Then I could integrate that. Oh, actually, that, that won't work because when I try to do the limits, so that u equals the sine theta, the plug in the original limit zero to pi, we get zero for both. Okay, never mind. Okay, so 
So <laughs> I think if I remember this actually worked out. Whenever you change sine like two p plus one to sine two p minus one, do you need to change the cosine to like one minus cosine? Um. Okay. Because then you use like a trig identity to like. Oh, to get from here to here, I did integration by parts. Oh. Yeah. Um. And okay, so actually, I'm gonna fill in more steps. Maybe that will feel a little bit more. Um. So if I. Like this as sine. So then that's my dv for which v will be co minus cosine. This is my u. Now I need du. That's where that comes from. But I feel like something went wrong from. Here to here. Um, so, well, I can see doing maybe integration by parts in a. Um, in a different way uh, than I did the first time. Like, so if I do this, uh, so, if I, so if I, now if I'm going to group this differently. As. Uh, I'm going to peel off one of these signs and put it over here. Um, so now this is my dv because I know how to integrate that. Um, and then this is my u. The problem is that would give me a du of cosine, and I don't want cosine. Um, and the integral of this would be, uh, I thought I'd u be equal to sine theta again, uh, for, for, for u substitution, not integration by parts. Then the antiderivative of that is sine to the 2p minus 1. That actually put me back where I started. <laughs> so I definitely don't want to do that. Um, Um, so I remember something like this has worked out in the uh, text, I think in chapter one. Um, they have a section on integration techniques. It's something like this was needed in one of the homework problems early on. Um, oh, but okay, it's different. It, there would be power of t times sine pi t. Um, I also could certainly look at a table of uh, integrals. Um, and uh, let's get it that way. But yeah, here it would make perfect sense to let, uh, again, this be u, and that would be dv. It gives me uh, sine. Yeah, number derivatives, so I'll lead to a product. Um, yeah, like a general formula for. Power of, of uh, sine. Um, and they have this, but I would certainly put a special function here, I'd rather not have that. Um, uh, but that's how they want to write it. <laughs> I want a recurrence relation. That's what most integral tables have. Wow, all of the integral tables are letting you down here. That's 
Cosine. Oh, sine. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, each one depending. Oh, so yeah, each one depends on. Okay, yeah, there it is. Um, all right, in this case, a is equal to 1. So i n is equal to n minus 1 times 1 is. Oh. Oh, interesting. No, but, this, but this is multiplied by n, which if I were to solve for i n, there would be a Divide by n. Okay, so that factor is supposed to be here in the denominator. As for and uh, similar for cosine. Um, and this. Looks like it probably messed something up because here the integration by parts looks like it's been done twice. And in the fact that we started, except times a factor, you went to the other side. So that tells me that I did something here that was actually wrong. <laughs> um, See, in this case, yeah, I mean, this whatever boundary term we get, that's, that's going to go away. Yeah, because this is similar to what I got, like 2p times, okay, oh. Um, I guess I have to carry this out a little more carefully then. Um, so I'll have to tie them up though. I group this under a little more embarrassing. <laughs> um, okay. So I think if I write more down, it will help. But this is what I get for doing stuff in the class. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So then, um, so, so, so B is minus cosine. Okay. B U is, oh, I see why. All right. So here's a mistake. When I take D, you I get, okay, 2P times sine of a 2P minus 1 theta times cosine. Because I get by chain rule over here. So I can actually have cosine squared. I knew it. Because I was doing it with you and I, I thought it was just by my chain rule. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Don't assume that it's you who made the mistake. Um, I was fallible as anybody. Um, okay, so that'll be the Okay, so right down here, this is where things first went wrong. <laughs> cosine squared. But now what I'll do is I'll write that. 
cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. Okay. Um, I did these steps down below, forget it. Um, okay. So, um, so now I'm going to have two of these terms. First one is going to be just one, and then I have plus one here. That's going to go. I start with. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, but so this is the integral I wanted to work with. So now. Um, so now I need to take this term and move it over to the other side. So now I'm going to have this integral times 2p plus 1. And that is all equal to this. And then I divide. And I'm left with this integral. Now I have that. Okay, so to, to reiterate, and this always comes with Cal 2 where you have an integral like an exponential times a sine or a cosine. You do integration by parts twice. The sine flips to a cosine, flips back into a sine. So like, oh, you're back where you started. But it's multiplied by some constant, a different constant. So you move it. So if you have the integral you started with on the left side of the equation, take the new integral with the same, the same integral times a constant and move it over to the left side, and then you have the, your integral you want times a constant, you divide by the constant. That's the same thing that happened here. So, okay, now, this is after carrying out integration by parts, um, really, uh, oh, actually, only one time, but it reduced the power, uh, it reduced the power by two. So I have to do this, um, a total of p times, and that's going to give me um, all the evens up top and all the odds down below. So the final result should be, um, well, eventually I get down to the sine, oh, I forgot the theta. The sine theta, the integral of that is 2, as I mentioned. So the final result should be, Um, so, 2p double factorial, and then I have, well, let's, let's suppose p is equal to 3, for instance, but I have 7 here. Uh, so, I'm going to have, and then 6 here, so 6, 4, 2, and here you're going to have 7 times 5 times 3. I, I don't have a 1, but who really cares about that? Uh, oh, and then... Oh, what about a, I'm not getting a sine flip, though. All right, so I get a factor of 2. Now, if I compare this to what I'm supposed to get, right, I get that, I get that, I get that. I don't, I'm still not getting a minus 1 from P, so I'm troubled by that. Are you missing a negative from the cosine? Uh, that's possible. Uh, okay, so when I take the derivative, I get 2P minus 1. Oh, okay. So, um, all right, v is equal to, well, okay, so on the one hand, v is equal to minus cosine, but the integration by parts formula will have a minus into it that gets canceled out by this. Now, if I look at the recurrence relation that I saw earlier, Um, yeah, there's right there is plus. Um, so there's a minus coming from the boundary terms. That's weird. Hmm. 
what to make of that. Um, well, dang. Um, you know what? The other thing to think about is uh, sine theta is non negative on the integral from 0 to pi. Raises whatever power, the integral as a whole should be non negative. I feel like the minus one of each should need to be there, but in that case, um, where did it come from? <laughs> so, um, hmm. Okay. Well, that's a mystery. Um, <laughs> so, okay. So we're not going to resolve everything. But, uh, uh, see, so this is how much. Brain functioning loops when you're up here teaching in the new calc. Why? Correctly. Okay. So it kind of sort of worked out. Right. Well, that was fun. Um, <laughs> so, I should say it's in the fine print. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So, um, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so, uh, so I guess the next time I see you will be in 12 days, uh, where I cover one more section, 15.5, um, so I couple pages notes on that, um, and start getting all the homework done. So, very early, happy Thanksgiving. And then my next week? Uh, Tuesday, there's no class. That inspiration and getting it is literally just writing do equals and do equals. <laughs> oh, sorry, I missed a chat message earlier. I didn't get a, I didn't get a notification of that.